Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's June week four and the prompt this week is plaid, as in this type of, of plaid tartan, um, checked design. Um, these are really, really easy to make and I just think they make great um, backgrounds. I've got um, an idea for what I'm going to do with these. Um, but I have been using the um, FW acrylics and my Bombay inks. Um, so, um, for instance, these two top ones here were the purple, the yellow and the white. Both of these had the same colours, but, um, you know, they look very, very different just because I applied them um, in a different order. So you get completely different outcomes each time, um, depending on, you know, how you layer um, the colours. But I just think these are absolutely beautiful. Now, this one here was done um, with the Bombay ink in teal. Um, fluorescent pink FW acrylic um, and also white. I think I used the FW um, acrylic with this. So again, a completely different um, look. But you don't have to use Bombay or um, FW acrylic inks. You can use um, acrylic paint. You can use watercolours. Um, just use what, whatever you have. So um, I want everybody to have a go at, um, at doing plaid. And let's see how many different designs we can um, come up with. Of course, mine um, are very fine sort of uh, design pattern um, you know see if you can create much much wider stripes um, so I'm just going to show you um, how to do it I'm working on mixed media paper let me just grab a sheet um, it started off um, as a page from an A3 pad and all I've done is I've just cut it in half lengthways here um, and then cut it I think I got two um, four out of um, each each page and this measures because I know somebody is bound to ask I think it's just shy of six inches inches by seven inches I think I, uh, I cut them to um, so that's what mine measure so let me show you how I did it in fact I need to choose um, some more colors now these are dry so I'm just going to use the same pots over again um, what color shall I do this time I've made a decision I want um, more blues and greens this time so I've chosen um, this green here grass green teal and white these three are all um, Bombay inks and so I'm just going to put some into um, my little pots here these are just um, little cupcake dishes that I got um, from the scrap store um, let's give them a shake beforehand and I'm just going to add a couple of drops there we go you don't need um, a great deal as I say you can use regular acrylic paint for this if you wanted to um, you might want to water it down so that it's a slightly runnier consistency have a play around and um, you know see what you come up with um, and then just some white so again I'm just going to add a couple of drops of, uh, of that as well I've had these in my stash for ages and I just don't get them out um, enough now brush wise I'm using two brushes here that I got in a set from Ikea I really like these um, brushes and um, they are cheaply made and I did have to glue um, one back together but that's because I abuse my brushes I leave them soaking in water for too long um, and this is just um, another um, white brush from a set so you want something with a flat um, tip ideally for this so what color shall I start off with I'm going to start off with the um, teal so let me just pop that there for a second and what you want to do is just dip your brush into the color you don't need much paint for this um, and you want to go with a really really light touch because what you want is sort of those those lines so let's see if I can keep a steady hand for this <laughs> This will remain to be seen so you know you really really you don't want to press hard on your paper at all you're barely touching and you can see that you know my lines are not straight that's okay that that really doesn't matter And then you want to dry in between each layer. So I'm going to give this a dry now and then I'm going to add a layer of the in fact I'll do white next there we go that was changing my mind mid-sentence wasn't it so give that a dry um, it doesn't take very long to dry at all and then I'm going to turn my page um, so I said white didn't I so this is the paintbrush I've been using for the white and again you know rub your brush off you really really don't need much um, much paint for this and again going in with a really really light light touch 
and you saw that I turned my page as well um, you know that's that's key you've got to keep turning your page um, with this I've missed a bit there so I'm just going to go over it there we go happy with that and again let's um, just go over this top bit where I've missed that and again I'm going to give that um, a dry with my heat tool so again I'm going to turn my piece of paper and this time I'm going to add some of the green so again sort of you know brushing that um, excess off now hang on a minute which would had I already turned my my page it's this way around isn't it And you can see that I'm ending up with much wider stripes this time. That's absolutely fine. Um, if you don't want to paint um, your plaid, by the way, if you've got napkins with a plaid design or patterned paper, then use use that. This is, you know, open to interpretation. And again, I'm going to give that um, a quick dry. Turning it round again, I'm going to add another layer of the teal. And it's just a case of building up um, layers with this. I just really like the um, effects. Who doesn't love a bit of bit of plaid? And then I think I'm going to dry this and add one more layer of white over the top. That's had a quick dry. I'm now going to um, go in with some more of the white. Let me just try and separate my brushes, um, my bristles a bit as well. And I might go over with the white in, in both directions. I'll see how it looks at the end of this. But the white is just, just lightening this um, for me. I think I'm going to leave that be. I really like that um, as it is. So I'm just going to continue making a few more backgrounds in different colourways. This one here is magenta, orange and white. The method is exactly the same for all of the pages that I create. So applying um, a full page of the stripes, drying the colour just so that um, the colours don't um, mix, and then tilting my page and applying the next colourway. So in this case, the orange. And I just keep um, repeating this process until I end up with a plan that I'm happy with. playing with my paintbrushes and my inks and these are the backgrounds that I've ended up with. I'm just really really happy with these so let me show you them. Um, these are the green ones I did. Now of course these were using the same coloured inks just layered differently. Um, I did a blue and pink one as well. I've got the two that I did with the um, yellow, magenta and white. This was yellow, magenta, white with a bit of um, teal added to it and then this one is teal fluorescent pink um, and white. Now I've got an idea as to how I'm going to use these. I watched a video by Marguerite um, Miller earlier on in the week. I'll leave the description to the video in um, uh, down below for you. Um, she's organising an ATC artist trading card postcard swap. Um, I'm not going to take part in in her swap but I just absolutely loved the idea. Go and check out her video because some of you might be interested in taking part. Um, what I am going to do though is make some of the ATC postcards and I'm going to put them up for grabs um, for, for you guys so you know depending on how many I end up making um, I'll send them out to, to you so if you're interested in receiving one as a little mini giveaway um, then leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll just pick some 
um, random uh, winners. Um, so I am going to cut these into artist trading card size. I probably won't use all of the um, the background. I'm just going to you know cut up maybe a couple of each of these colourways. Artist trading cards for those of you that don't know what they are um, are tradable cards. They're the same size as playing cards, two and a half by three and a half inches. They can be in either landscape or portrait um, format and they're just little miniature cards that you make and trade with with your friends um, anybody who's followed me for a while knows that I'm making artist trading cards um, for a calendar page for 2020 but I'm going to turn these into um, postcard format so let me go and chop some up and then I'll be right back okay so I've cut two of each of the backgrounds out um, so I've got 14 in total and um, and I've also cut some postcard um, size blanks as well so these measure five and a half by three and a half inches and the idea is um, that you will have um, two artist trading cards on a postcard so like that and um, that you share with your friends and they can either cut them up and have two artist trading cards or leave them as they are and then you obviously stick your postage stamp on the back and the mailing address of the recipient so that's what um, I'm going to be doing I've decided to use um, craft coloured cardstock um as my base. Now when you're mailing things out um, it's the corners that are going to get hit the hardest and, and have the most wear so I am going to take my corner rounder, this is just um, an X cut corner rounder and I'm going to round all of my corners on both the artist trading cards um, and the postcards um, and then I just need to start decorating them. So as soon as I've done that I'll be right back. So I've rounded off um, the corners on my postcards and my artist trading cards. I used my X-Cut corner rounder. They come in two different sizes and it was the small one that um, I used today. They've got no measurements on unfortunately. I think they only do two sizes and the smaller one is just perfect for smaller um, items and don't those look pretty just as they are. So I'm going to put the um, postcard blanks to one side whilst I work um, on the artist trading so cards. This is what I'm going to be using for my focal images. I've got two rolls of gift wrap. Um, I've got this one here. I'm trying not to rustle this because I know it will drive everybody crazy. Um, these are both different. They were £1.75 per sheet um, and I don't know how many images are on here but um, you know an awful lot. Absolutely brilliant value for, for money and each um, image is different as well. So what I am going to do is just pick um, an image that works perfectly with each of my backgrounds I am going to fussy cut them out and as soon as I've done that I'll be right back my images out and I spent a lot of time just fiddling around with which image looked right on on which background um, so before I glue anything down I just want to go over these with some stays on um, ink just to you know disguise the white lines and just to help them blend into the background um, just a little bit better so I'm just going to ink around all the edges just like this and then I'm just going to glue these down with just a regular glue stick I am going to seal over the edges of these with some matte medium. Now you can see here that I'm going over the edges as well because I just want to grunge these up and give them more of a vintagey look um, as well. So I'm just going to be, you know, quite heavy handed um, with this. Can you see? I've inked around the edges um, of all of these, all of the images anyway. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the border of the artist trading cards. And I am just going to use a regular glue stick. I've got um, a batch of deli paper here. Let me just grab my glue stick. Um, and this should, you know, be enough because I'm going to seal it with matte medium anyway. Um, when you are inking your edges, you need to make sure that you use a permanent um, ink if you're going to go over with matte medium because, of course, you know, if you don't, everything will just smudge. So I'm just going to glue that on and then I can trim any, any overhang. Um, but there we go. That's, um, that's fine. Let's just grab a microfiber cloth just to make sure it's pressed down just you know don't want these coming unstuck and then I can um, just trim around the edges as well um, I will ink 
the edge of the artist trading card but I might add some kind of a border I haven't decided yet so I'm just going to do this with all of them and then we'll see what we've got glued my little characters down and I've paired them up as well I'm um, trying to be random about it but you know trying to get um, contrasting colours as well so they'll be glued on there something like that um, I want to ink around the edges I also want to add some um, little quotes these are art by Marlene um, the cover has fallen off um, so I can't remember what these are called um, if I can find it I'll link it um, below but there's some really fun quotes here stay wild wild child born to be free which are just absolutely perfect um, for these so I am going to try and be random let's just take one of these off so let's take the first one um, which is stay wild I'm going to ink around the edge just because you know it's too too white I think my ink pad might need um, re-inking so I'm just going to ink around the edge like like this I'm not going to add any extra glue because I am going to um, add gel medium over the top of the whole of these anyway just you know because they're going to be going through the post so let's have a look stay wild let's put this one on on here like that so stay wild we can have at the at the top there so I'm just going to add some little quotes um, and as I've said I will ink around the edges as well let me just do one just so that you can see which will just frame um, the individual pieces so I've glued my artist trading cards down to the postcards I forgot to um, stick the camera back on but I just used some Fabri-Tac applied it all over the back um, and then I've just put them in between pieces of deli wrap like this and weighted them down with a heavy book just for half an hour or so just to make sure that they're stuck um, nice and firmly so you know those are well and truly now held in place um, so what I want to do um, is just add um, some matte medium so I'm just going to use a piece of deli paper again I'm going to be using the Galleria matte medium um, if I can get the lid off that is so I'm just going to add some matte medium all over the front of the cards and the reason I'm doing this is because these are going to be going in the mail I just want to make sure that um, you know if they get any bits on them that it can be wiped off when it reaches its destination um, and just that they're weather weatherproof um, etc um, etc and I just want to make sure as well that nothing comes unstuck so I'm just going over it like like this and then I shall just set that um, aside to dry here are my finished postcards I'm really pleased with these I think they're fun funky um, I've never done anything like this before either so you know it's a, a bit of a change for me too um, I think the backgrounds go perfectly with these images they're just really simple um, I toyed with the idea of doing more stamping on the plaid backgrounds and I'm really glad um, that I didn't because I just think it would have been over the top just just too much in um, for such a small size so let me just um, flick through them um, I've made seven I'll be keeping one for myself just as a, you know a reminder of the work that I've done but um, I do want to give six away so if you are interested in receiving one of these then leave a comment in the comment section below letting um, me know that you're interested in in having one um, I'll be drawing a the winners six winners as I say in next week's video um, but please try um, and comment by Wednesday because I don't leave my videos until the last minute and I do you know work ahead of the game as it were so I usually do my videos um, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday at the absolute latest usually so you know if you're interested you better get in there quick so here they are um, I just think they're adorable just so so cute I think the colors are really fun um, and I think because I've kept the backgrounds fairly um, plain um, that the images just really stand out so there we go and that's what they look like on the back as well so what I'll be doing is just attaching um, a postage stamp and the address of the recipient and I will just be mailing them out um, just like this it doesn't matter where you're based you don't have to be based in the UK um, it's not going to cost much to post these out and as I say you can either keep it as a postcard or you can trim it down um, into two individual um, artist trading cards entirely um, up to you how you decide to use it now let me just um, show 
show you a couple of things. I found the cover to the Art by Marlene set. So this is the um, set where I got the stickers from. Um, this is what it's um, like. There's some really fun quotes um, in this. A few visual images um, as well. So there we go. Um, so that's what that looks like. And it is called Whimsy Art. Um, it was $7.99 by the looks of um, things. Um, and I think I got this from Art from the Heart. The other thing I want to show you, um, sorry about the noise. This is the, um, the, the gift wrap that I used and it's called Zoo Portraits. Now there must be at least 70 or 80 images on this. And as I say, it was £1.75 per sheet. Both sheets were slightly different. Um, and the company that manufactures them, let me just hold this up close, is Lagom Design. Yego Partel, so www.lagomdesign.co.uk. Um, I just got this from a local card and gift shop, so <clears throat> You know, if you're interested in this kind of thing, have a look in um, gift shops near, near you. I just think that wrapping paper gift wrap is just a perfect way of getting focal images for your artwork really, really cheaply. So I look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the plaid prompt this week. You don't have to paint your plaid if you don't want to. Although it's very, very easy to do. And as I've said, you could use acrylic inks, acrylic paint, watercolours. Um, search plaid backgrounds on the internet because I'm sure there are loads of ideas. You'll probably find loads on Pinterest as well. Um, and of course, you know, feel free to use a napkin or, you know, plaid style decorative papers if you, if you want to. But if you enjoyed my video this week, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And as I've said, if you're interested in taking part in this mini giveaway, I've got six of these um, that, you know, I'll be parting with. Then let me know in the comments below. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.